Hi, I'm Jake Burkett from Graylian Games, and this is Flak, a 1984 game which I do believe I played back in the day um, for Spectrum or this, Commodore 64, not sure which. I'm not sure I liked it back then, which isn't really um, a good sign for now. Look at that though, it's got a beginner level, which I'm going to go on. Oh, I see that's difficulty. Yeah, yeah, let's stick at beginner level. Not sure if I've got the right joystick plugged in. I'm guessing that's a no. Let's try again. Nope. Okay, fine. So you shoot in front of you to a spot on the ground, looks like. Just going to save the game. I guess making your ship sort of fly off of the. Uh, can you blow those up? No. Oh, yeah off of the carrier or landscape sorry landing strip is fairly novel sort of I mean I know they did it in 1942 oh and flying shark and <laughs> perhaps countless others yeah this seems familiar but I don't think I played this on Commodore 64 it must have been a spectrum it's familiar but not familiar like really familiar what's that okay so I'm guessing there's going to be no to space do anything there's going to be no aircraft because this just appears to be aim your reticule at the static objects which isn't unchallenging because you've got to avoid bullets at the same time brown flashing bullets which to the game's credit do show up over the pastel landscape going to start me again or what Mm, I'll reload my save. Just must remember to keep saving, he says. Let's get that thing. Oh, really? I walked into that. Flew into it. Yeah, can't do anything with those. I wonder if you can't fly into this. Here's an experiment. Yep, now I can fly over them. Oh, it's got auto fire. That's greatly improves my quality of life. Let's do that. I mean, it might be more precise to manually fire, but I'm tired of spamming the fire button. Whoa! So I guess I'm interested to find out if the gameplay changes up much if I make progress I mean it gets a bit more tricky one of the things is once once they scroll down beyond your sort of reticule distance you can't get them so any below that point on the screen it's too late and then they can keep firing at you oh. so I'm gonna have to take them out early really yeah, I mean, the blue bullet, blue, brown bullets are visible. So that's good. But I still don't seem to be able to avoid them. The controls, the craft controls a bit slowly. I mean, yeah, unless there's a power up. It's the sort of speed that would be okay if if you've got a speed power up later on but then you'd have to adjust you know enemy bullet speed and so on as well or quantity of bullets got to keep player on edge oh. fun soft well there's a fourth wall breaking bit of graphics <laughs> fun soft is this fun hmm it's okay yeah, this is different. All right, so we've reached a different area where there are horrible little dots that appear at random, seemingly at random, with no clue. Is that it? Okay. So these hexagon things, I guess you can figure out where they fired from. Why is my screen flashing? It was flashing brown. I don't know why. So can you kill them even if you can't see them? 
Is it only when they surface? Yeah, look, it's flashing again. Oh, extra life. 10,000. Interesting way to signify it. I mean, I paid attention. So. Save. This is a quite tricky, these hexagons. Hexagon of hexagons. Oh, these hidden turrets. Alright, it has actually become more challenging. I mean, you never know what things are going to open up and shoot at you. Anything could in the scenery. All these diagonal lines are dangerous. Yeah, every single one. I mean, I guess it is slightly lacking without things in the air. All you had to do was have a forward facing guns outside of the bomb and then you could aim for the ground and have you know flying enemies too which I'm sure plenty of other games have done. Fixed distance bomb and you know standard sort of forward facing guns. Mm. Well I thought it was going to be NAF. I mean, I played this back in a day on the, I think the Spectrum. Maybe it was NAF on the Spectrum, and it, it's not, it's not terrible. God, I'm gonna try and make it out of that situation alive. Yeah, it isn't terrible, but it's 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 not enthralling. What I'm sort of quite looking forward to already is. I'm going to try to play as many, you know, vertical scrolling shoot 'em ups as I can find on Lemon 64 under that category. Some of them might have been miscategorized, so I might miss them out. Um, but I'm going to try and play as many as I can, even even some rubbish ones, not terrible, terrible ones, but even some fairly poor ones. I'll I'll give it a go for a laugh. Um, you know, just as a learning exercise, because sometimes you can see what's bad about them helps inform you as to how you would make a good one that's probably the reason I downloaded all these originally because back in the 90s I was making oh look at that score you cannot see it over the white because it needs a drop shadow or a bar or something these days we put a semi-transparent bar there probably yeah so in the 90s I was coding a shoot 'em up game in DOS which are called Wing Wang which I never released it's on my I think it's on my website um, a more modern version of it actually called Jewel of Orion and I used the same sprites and made a PC version of it in 2004 uh, well sorry DOS was PC but I made a sort of Windows version of it in, in 2004 but yeah in the time in the 90s I must have been playing a load of these wanting to make one made this DOS based one in C I think I don't think it was even C++ I knew how C++ worked, but you don't always need it for sort of simple, simple games. I mean, hell, people coded a lot of these, like this one, probably in assembly language. It's partly why some games sort of suck, because honestly, assembly language is hard to get anything working in. You've got speed, way more speed than basic, but it's just tough, and there weren't decent tools, especially in the early 80s. There weren't decent art programs and tools and compilers and like in the later 80s you had artists who could do art on different computers you had people who could write the code on a different computer and sort of cross compile it so it ran and tested on the 64 so there were lots of things to make game dev easier and more professional than in the early days when you had to code it on that machine and some of the graphics you know before you could use a tool you ended up having to um, draw them out on, you know, graph paper and calculate the binary for them, which was laborious. But well, I say laborious, and I'm sure it was if you had to do a lot of them. But I found it fun. It was quite satisfying. Ah, fun soft. Is this the end of the level? Fun soft. Maybe when you see their logo, you're like, yeah, this is the end of the level. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I've seen enough of flak. 
I just reached the end of this level maybe just quickly peek at the next level but I'm basically done with it save there I guess it would be quite tricky without infinite lives no this isn't a new level it's just like this thing again the invisible water turret things water turret squares is there more of them? I feel like there's more of them and they're hexagon things yeah it feels like it's, it's repeating itself I mean surely I didn't lap the entire game did I? maybe hmm okay yeah I think I'm done flack um, it's okay which is you know actually quite an achievement for a 1984 game hey look at that it's jetting me past all the landscape when I died this is to where I got to and it, it looks like I got pretty far oh uh, yeah okay so that was the same bit of landscape anyway that's flack um, thanks for watching goodbye